Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Quilem Farms. Today, we are starting things just a little bit differently, as you can tell. Maybe not. We are not out at the farm. We are actually in the middle of nowhere where there is no service, just us, nature, and the remnants of a morning fire. first got started out a few years ago when I asked the local farmers in the city where I was starting to farm if I could do things the way that I wanted to do them they literally laughed at me and told me that it wasn't possible that you had to do it the way that it is being done and that I, there was no other way for things to be done even when done organically that that was the best that it was going to be. That if you grow things too close together, they're not that one or the other or both are going to suffer and that neither are going to actually do good and give you good yields. Which, if you look at nature, where we are, that's completely not the case. And things are literally touching and holding hands and all are thriving. So my thought was if it can happen in nature where everything can grow together symbiotically and still produce heavily even if not if like let's say you were to take a tomato plant and put it in a pot by itself and give it all the nutrients sure it might do a little bit better you might get a couple extra tomatoes however if now you're getting tomatoes with carrots at the base and lettuce by the carrots and then beans growing up your tomatoes and you have basil down in the shade. Well, now, sure, you're getting two less tomatoes or, you know, depending on the variety, you might get, you know, eight less cherry tomatoes. Woo! But you're also getting all of these other things at the same time. So are you really getting less? And if we look at nature, look around. There are... Everything from flowers to shrubs to small trees to ferns, the clovers, there's giants, old growth uh, oaks and pines and red cedars all around me. And everything is thriving. Everything is putting on flowers and berries and it's putting on new growth. Nothing is leggy. Nothing looks like it's lacking nutrition, anything. And all of that has to do with the soil health. Now, I'm out in a national forest out here in the Pacific Northwest, and this is an old growth forest. So the soil biology and the microbiology out here is generations, thousands of generations old. So the soil health I have found from just coming out here and looking at nature is what actually allows all of these plants to be growing so close together because there's enough nutrients and bioavailability because of all the microbes and the microbiology in the soil to allow all of these plants to be thriving and putting on flowers and fruit and new growth and not be leggy even though they're in the shade of old growth forest yet they're still thriving. We're going to be hanging out just a little bit longer out here and then we are going to be heading back to the farm to actually show you guys how to start making your own microbiology in a very simple way so that you can start building your soil health so that you can also grow like nature where everything can be touching and nothing is going to be lacking. Let's hang out here for a little bit, go enjoy this water because it is absolutely beautiful with the sun coming down. Oh, I, I gotta show you guys. I wish that this camera could do it justice, but it really can't.
farm here and I just want to show you guys the space that I am talking about. In addition to we have so many things in all of our garden beds that are planted symbiotically together. We have the forest that we are slowly working into and planting symbiotically with that we are using as a template and we are slowly just replacing the inedible plants with edible ones. We have not only some clover there in the bottom, we have some lavender just coming in to flower as well as chives all occupying the same space. Another great example is coming into Berry Isle. We have some lemon balm that is coming in nicely with raspberries behind it. You almost can't even differentiate between the two. And there is a blueberry hiding right here that is coming in nicely as well with raspberries all behind. This little open spot has a bunch of onions that are coming in to fill that along with another blueberry. Here on this side we have a grape coming up all are pretty much touching each other and will be at their adulthood in life when they're all full grown. We also even have some orange fizz that has perennialized. Looking behind me here with all of these plants, there are grasses, there are thimble berries, there are salmon berries, there are blackberries, there are baby maples, there's ferns, there are so many things planted together. The one thing that I hope you can see or that I hope you notice is that there is no bare soil at all. The plants are all covering the soil, yet they're all thriving because the soil life is amazingly fertile in there because they are all working together. The plants will photosynthesize. Now, we'll, okay, let's pause there for a second. We all remember what photosynthesis is, yeah? Carbon dioxide in the air. Plants take in that carbon dioxide via their leaves that then separate it into oxygen and carbon. The carbon then gets pumped down into the soil where microbes come and they eat the carbon and it's in the form of like a sugary drink to them. It's their food source. In exchange, they bring minerals and then other microorganisms come and eat those microbes and release the minerals in a plant soluble form aka they poop it out and in exchange the plants are then able to absorb these minerals through their roots so photosynthesis it's super important right you need plants taking carbon dioxide out of the air and turning it into oxygen so that we have something to breathe but also you need that carbon pumped into the soil so that we don't have access in the atmosphere but also so that the microbes have something to eat. I'm sure that some of you have heard, it might even be the reason that you've clicked on this video, but there unfortunately has been some compost and some potting soils and things that have gone out to consumers like yourself that have been contaminated with herbicides. And I'm not gonna throw out names, I'm not gonna throw out that, that's not what this video is about. This video is about what you can do if you were unfortunate to be one of the people that have purchased one of these bags or compost from a source that was contaminated, unfortunately. But there is a very simple thing that you can do with some of the weeds that you might be gathering in your garden area that you may not know what to do with. Instead of composting them, you can throw them in a container with some sugar and we can make some plant tea. So for this, it's a super simple process. All you need is one, probably two pounds, I think it's a two pound bag of brown sugar. It can be light brown or regular brown sugar. And you need a container about a gallon, gallon and a half. I think that's a gallon and a half size glass jar. And it's not a sealable lid, it just sits on top, so it's not airtight. And then of course I got some gloves and some gardening shears so that we can harvest some weeds. And we're gonna go probably fill up this bucket half full to a full with some weeds and some other plants in our area. All right, so now that we have all our weeds, I even grabbed some comfrey because comfrey is full of micronutrients as well as the main three as well. We're gonna chop that up nice and small and get it in here until this is full. I know we're a little 
far away right now, but you can see right there, Lucky and Patty, that is where all the wood ash gets dumped from our fire pit and the fireplace and any plan we burn anytime we burn something all the ash when it gets emptied goes there because it is a natural mite tick and flea repellent and tis the season for those right now and chickens will use the wood ash that has lye naturally in it to actually coat themselves and as use it as a preventative Alright, once we get it to about right here, uh, three quarters of the way full, I guess. You know, packed, but not like compacted. Like, I could probably pack this down to half, if not a third, if I really wanted to. But we're going to take about half of our bag of brown sugar and just slowly mix it in with all of the debris here. And this is giving our microbes something to eat because they won't have access to readily available carbon as of yet. Uh, so once you have a pretty even coat, it sinks down to uh, about, a th it sinks down about a third to about two thirds of what it was. So in this case, we're at three quarters. So it sunk down to a half of the container. Now we're going to take the rest of the brown sugar. Remember, you should have about half left, and we're going to make a crust for the top. We're going to cover this whole thing, and we're going to pack it down just a little bit to make sure that it's sealed all the way around. Now all we're going to do is put the lid on. Now again, this is just sitting on top. You can do as a cloth. You can do anything to allow the gases to escape, because you don't want to make a bomb. Now this fermented plant juice you will see in about a day will start to produce actually within a couple hours will start to produce its own liquid and you want to go ahead and just leave it let it sit for a few days after a couple days it's gonna become actual liquid with the plant mass Ooh. breaking down and becoming liquid fertilizer and that is when you will see me again if you are following along with this and making your own to help amend your soil for whatever reason, whether you are fixing dead soil that has become dirt, or you are just wanting to grow better and healthier crops, then make sure you like this video. If you like this video, subscribe so that you will see when that next one comes out, and make sure you ring that notification bell so that you get notified when it gets uploaded. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and hopefully you learned something. I will see you guys in the next one.